Good afternoon or evening, depending on whether you're hearing our 1 p.m., 5 p.m., or 8 p.m. broadcast of today's Daily Briefing, which, of course, is also going to be put on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash TV. It's April 23rd, a Thursday, and we are visiting with Mayor Copeland again to accomplish a couple of things. First of all, to take a look at the new mandate that came out last night regarding gradual reopening of certain businesses. And then also to visit with some members of our mental health professional community and take at least a brief look at some issues and some solutions to some of what people may be feeling. So we hope you'll stay with us here now for the Daily Briefing on KLAM and KCDV. Mayor Copeland, a pleasure to have you with us once again. And um, there was a pretty significant state announcement yesterday. The mandate had to do with beginning to reopen certain businesses, restaurants, uh, places to get a haircut, the tattoo parlors, and, and certain other businesses. The whole text of it is on the state website, coronavirus.alaska.gov, and also some apparently some pretty clear language on the, the degree to which local communities have wiggle room with regard to this announcement. So uh, go ahead and, and uh, talk about that big development out of the gate here. Yeah, so uh, in fact, I had the uh, state mandates in front of me, and it'll be very important for local businesses to refer to this because they, they are, it's very, very, very restrictive. So uh, I wouldn't give anybody the perception that the governor is just opening Alaska for business wide open. Uh, it's In fact, uh, they might be so restrictive that uh, businesses would uh, prefer to just continue providing curbside and other services. But uh, the important element is uh, for Cordova to understand is that the governor made it very clear uh, that um, this is not to be superseded by uh, municipalities. In fact, I'll read it here right off the website. Business operations and other activities permitted to operate under this mandate may not be prohibited by local, municipal, or tribal mandate, directive, resolution, ordinance, regulation, or other order. So he's making it clear that he wants consistency across the state. And for Cordova's part, if we feel like uh, a better path is advisable, we're not going to contradict the governor. We will likely just um, issue a health advisory. And we, we think it's a better practice for now, for Cordova, right where we're at, to blah, blah. So, yeah, just wanted to get that out, a piece of important late-breaking news last night. Okay, and so and this is the new mandate, uh, of course, that is the, where they're sort of starting to open certain businesses up again. And um, it, you pointed out something very good there, of course, that while a while the city can't uh, step in between the governor and the businesses and make things more or less restrictive, um, an individual business, you know, say a restaurant, while the mandate says that the restaurant. Uh, can operate at 25% capacity, can let people sit together as long as they're same in the, in the same household, as long as they're this far apart, and all those mechanics in the thing. Uh, the city can't, can't meddle with that, in other words, but um, say a restaurateur that thought, I don't think this is uh, something I want to mess with, so we're going to just go ahead and continue to do delivery only like we have been. I, that's, that's, that's a real good point. It doesn't take... Um, it doesn't take certain choices away from individual operators. And, uh, of course, we'll see how this evolves. Anything else on that topic before we move on? Um, yeah, one important thing for the from the city's part, and, and you're right, the, actually the governor's intention is to give businesses more freedom uh, rather than less. But uh, I would remind businesses that becomes effective 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, Friday the 24th, and you still are required to get your City of Cordova mutual assistance uh, application filled out that explains how you're going to reopen your business and so forth. So um, those are the two steps. You can go to the City of Cordova's website and link to the COVID uh, page to get that mutual assistant form. It's fillable online. It's just one one page, I think. And, and uh, But do get that in the City Hall before you reopen your business tomorrow morning. 
That's okay. all I had to add. Yeah, and if that that's of course if you choose to to reopen your business as allowed under this new state mandate, which which again an individual business can choose how they want to act under that, but uh, people will not be able to say testify to the city council that the city needs to make it more restrictive or start flooding uh, uh, city officials with emails saying you have to you know. Cordova needs to do it differently. That's because that's just not allowed. Now, you have some uh, uh, guests with you uh, regarding another very important topic in the middle of all of this. Yeah, um, this morning I thought it'd be great to talk a little bit, uh, another tool in um, in our efforts to manage the coronavirus epidemic. And we've heard a fair amount about uh, the importance of health, physical health, uh, if you do get sick to, to help your body overcome but um, what doesn't get talked about uh, very much is mental health. And so we have uh, our Cordova professionals with us here this morning, um, afternoon now, I guess, um, Barbara Jewell over at Sound Alternatives and uh, Matt Rush from the Alonka um, Health Center. And um, they're going to be uh, giving us a little bit of information about uh, mental health during this crisis. Okay, well, let's start, uh, Matt, maybe with you. Uh, what are some of the most pressing issues that you feel are are uh, unfolding right now regarding people's mental health? Yeah, good question. I think there's a lot of pressing issues. Um, most significantly, I think, um, has to do with really being overwhelmed. I think most families um, are having to deal with such significant change in their life uh, from having to do schooling at home um, to, you know, working at home to working through video, uh, you know, really, I I think it's easy to to say that uh, (laughs) most of us, our life has been turned upside down. So one of the most significant issues is really living in a world of uncertainty and, uh, you know, the psyche that we have uh, dealing with uncertainty brings a lot of fear and worry um, and uh, can be, you know, quite overwhelming to deal with. So I think one of the biggest concerns I would have as a mental health provider is, you know, is the, how is the community dealing with that? Um, are they, are they um, having signs of depression, potentially, or anxiety? Those are the two big ones that uh, tend to... Um, people tend to struggle with the most, uh, being uh, closed up in their households and uh, watching the news and, uh, you know, seeing all of the, the pandemic stuff and, and the community things. And, and, and uh, it, it really is um, quite overwhelming for most people with their mental health. So, Sure. Well, Barb, um, yeah. let me ask you, yeah. um, what what might be some symptoms that a person who otherwise doesn't uh, have, say, depression or anxiety or, or other behavioral health issues, what might be some symptoms that they are uh, starting to form as a result of the pandemic? I think that if people start to feel like the stress of the current situation is impacting their daily activities for a period of time, um, disrupting sleep, uh, affecting appetite, um, affecting your ability to interact with others um, or to manage emotions. And that's not just, you know, one day, but several days. Um, you know, that's probably a symptom that things are getting to you, that you're maybe past your ability to cope by yourself, um, and you may want to reach out to folks. You know, obviously any thoughts of harming oneself or harming others is always a big red flag for um, the need to reach out. But I think sometimes some of those other signs are not quite as apparent. Um, and it's just important for people to kind of keep track of themselves um, and see if they're starting to have difficulty with their daily activities um, and taking care of themselves. Okay. Uh, so quickly, and, and I should point out, actually, that this is a very important topic and uh, Barb and, and Matt, uh, you and I, uh, the, the two of you and I have already committed to find a time as soon as we can to do a more extensive exploration of this on a, on a future talk show. We're just kind of going over it quickly for the briefing here. But 
if if somebody is uh, is experiencing some of these symptoms or, or they just want to know they're, they're, they feel like they're, you know, kind of th- that this is getting to them mentally. What are some things, Matt, that they could do now to maybe, uh, you know, what, anything you can give in summary, obviously, to maybe ease some of that? Yeah, um, there's lots that that, uh, that you can do. Um, one of the most significant things, obviously, is exercise. Um, you know, when we stress, the body stresses, uh, we build up uh, norepinephrine and uh, serotonin in the brain, and that causes, uh, when that's not able to be burnt off uh, through exercise, that can exponentially grow and, and sort of make things worse. Um, so getting some kind of daily exercise is, is critical, um, especially, uh, of course, being uh, not being able to go out and do the same things that we normally do. Another thing that we can do is, in a time of uncertainty is, is significant is, is plan our day. You know, setting, setting goals and achieving those goals can bring back control into your life in a time where we feel out of control. So, you know, getting up, starting your day, planning your day, you know, little things even such as, you know, planning a meal or, you know, going for a bike ride with your kids or, uh, you know, and, and then, and then acknowledging, hey, I accomplished this. Or maybe I, we, we, you know, the kids had video schooling today and, and we achieved that and everything went well. And, and so to give yourself um, positive feedback and, and acknowledgement that you've achieved these goals can really kind of give yourself anchor points throughout your day and, and uh, certainly be more positive. Uh, another thing, and I think this has been talked about uh, often, is to, to filter out um, – you know, the news media, in a sense, I mean, media is good, but if we uh, ruminate on that too much, it uh, causes us to kind of think about the worst case scenarios in life. And um, and so that exponentially grows fear and anxiety and then uh, makes things uh, more difficult for us to deal with everyday stressors. So those are a few good things. I'm just scratching the surface uh, sure. here, but... Uh, off the top of my head, those are those are good things that we all could do. Okay, Barb, anything to add to that list? Add, thank you. Sorry. Um, I think the one thing that I would mention that I didn't hear Matt say um, is connect with people. Mm-hmm. Connect with family and friends and neighbors. Um, reach out. Ask them how they're doing. Tell them how you're doing. Um, one of the things that helps us get through tough times is our connections with others. Okay, well, and again, all very good. I I, I uh, hate that we have to be in the short format now because I'm already very intrigued. But again, uh, for those listening, we uh, very much intend, as soon as we can put it together, to do an extended program on mental health issues with uh, both of our facilities that are that are specialists in this. Uh, Matt from Alonka Health and... Um, and Barb Jewell from Sound Alternatives. So we're going to dive into this as soon as we can. Uh, for the purposes of time, Clay, back to you. Uh, any any final thoughts as we wrap this briefing up? Uh, no, I just um, I think those are two of the resources, Sound Alternatives and uh, Alonka Health Clinic, uh, to go directly for help if you are feeling those symptoms. And um, I look forward to uh, to a bigger program. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, I appreciate the idea, and thanks very much to all of you for joining us for today's briefing. We definitely will uh, try and uh, take an extended look at the mental health issues here in the very near future. You've been listening to The Daily Briefing for April 23rd. Glad you could join us on KLAM and KCDV again. I want to emphasize we plan to do a longer show about mental health as soon as we can. And also, the mandate that came out last night is on the state website, if you would like to be able to take a look at it, coronavirus.alaska.gov. So you can read it for yourself and understand what's going on at the state level and as far as what happens at the local level. We'll keep an eye on that and see how it evolves. This show airs daily, weekdays, I should say, in the 1, 5, and 8 p.m. hours, also archived on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Cordova TV. If you want to know when our newest programs come out quickly, 
Robbie tells me you can subscribe to the channel and then there's a bell that you also click that says you want to get notifications when our channel does something. And he knows YouTube pretty well, so I'm going to take his word for it. We'll get regular programming back on now, and thank you again for joining us on the Clam and the Eagle.